Hello everyone, back to you into today's fur video of the NCFS 6 month look ahead for today's fur video. So as the name says on the tin, uh, we're going to go 6 months ahead with the long range CFS V2 model. And this is going to take us from next month, from May through to October. So we're going into the autumn of 2019 uh, with this particular update. More on that very shortly. Uh, today's first video was a weekend forecast, so as, as always on a Saturday we're having a detailed look at the weather for the week ahead. And then we released a week to 10 day video update as well. That video is here on the homepage at gadsovis.com. Just scroll down the page and you'll find it above the uh, pollen count. So, CFS six month look ahead. Uh, we're going to start off with 700 millibar height anomalies. And then we're going to have a look at the corresponding temperature and precipitation anomalies uh, that go with those heights. So, of course, the first couple of months has got some scientific merit. Hopefully, if the model is correct, then month one, month two um, should have a reasonable rate of accuracy. But as you go further out, month three, month four, month five, month six, obviously things get uh, more and more unreliable. So by the time you get through to months four, five, six, it's really simple around with just the thumb. And it's, we'll have a bit of a laugh, see what it's showing, but uh, you shouldn't be taking it uh, seriously at all. All right, let's get on with it, man. We're going to start off with 700 millibar height anomaly for May 2019. If everything's working correctly, this should be the most reliable part of the whole thing. Um, so for May, the uh, CFS V2 is placing an area of above average heights over to the east and northeast of the country, below average heights in the North Atlantic. Flow and jet's going to be getting something like that. So we're going to be pulling in east or southeast winds with that. It should should be a relatively dry and you'd have thought pretty mild, if not quite warm signal, actually, uh, for March high pressure in control. That high pressure strengthens into June. Look at this big area of above average height sitting over and just to the east of the country. Uh, winds again like to be coming from an east or southeasterly direction. So that is going to be, if it's right, big if of course, but if it's right, that will be a, a warm and uh, dry month. High pressure in control brings significantly drier, but also warmer than average temperatures. A cracking start to the summer of 2019 with that one. This is month number three. Obviously, reliability is beginning to fall now. This is July. And the 700 millibar height anomaly for July has above average heights to our north and west. Weaker pressure to our south doesn't really show low pressure. Um, so, again, you'd expect quite a lot of dry weather to be involved with this. Probably winds still coming generally from an easterly direction. May not quite be as uh, settled as it would be in June. Uh, maybe risk of some heavy showers or storms, particularly in the south. But overall, a very nice signal uh, for July. August looks like this. We're up month four, so this is starting to get into the realm of just for fun. Uh, we've got above average heights generally to our north. Otherwise, not much else to be seen. Winds could be a little bit more east northeasterly there. Uh, Atlantic is blocked off, so it's not a particularly unsettled signal. Um, and overall, these are anti-cyclonic signals, really, uh, for the summer. Bit of a change into September, month number five, of course, so not worth worrying about. But the high pressure is going a bit further north, uh, up towards Greenland and possibly around here. Again, it doesn't really show in particular area of low pressure, but I would have thought how far north the high pressure is going, and because it's September, you're probably going to be starting to get a bit of a southerly tracking jet stream going, so you may start to get some low pressure coming underneath that ridge of high pressure uh, during September. And then very different for October, this is month six, it has uh, high pressure out to the southwest of the country, low pressure developing around Greenland and Iceland, strengthening the, uh, the jet stream um, and bringing in more of a westerly uh, type flow there. So after all of those easterly months that we have between May and September, the flow finally swings round more to the west as we get through to October. 
Temperature anomalies for May are coming out warmer than average in most of Northern Europe and also Central Europe and also the UK and Ireland is included in that too. It gets even warmer though into June. Remember in June, it looks like a cracking start to the summer of 2019 with a big area of high pressure sitting through central parts of Europe and that'll be dragging up those warm southeasterly to easterly winds. So potentially quite a hot month. Uh, in June with above average temperatures quite significantly so. July also coming out warmer than average. It's a warm summer, maybe even hints of a hot summer here, certainly for June and for July anyway. Uh, the high pressure is more, more towards the north northwest of us, I think, in uh, July, which possibly gives us a little bit more of a northeasterly type flow. So not quite as warm, but even so, it's a very anti-cyclonic signal still for July and temperatures significantly warm than average. August also looking above average with temperature anomalies. Notice from that peak in June, the temperature anomalies to average are lowering. So it's not as hot in uh, August to average as it is in June, but still widely above average through most parts of Northern Europe, the UK is including that. But turning through to September, we're going closer to average, still a little bit on the mild and average side, but gradually all of that warmth is draining away. Uh, so September possibly closer to average. October, this is more of a westerly month, remember, in October. So we have uh, low pressure up here and we have high pressure uh, down there, which sort of brings up a little bit more of a west-southwesterly flow. So October is mild and average, but from a different route. Um, compared to the other months, because that's more of a west southwesterly type wind. Precipitation anomalies, so for May, significantly drier than average. So again, the, the high pressure is there to our north and northeast. We're bringing in those easterly winds. Low pressure's down here, so it looks quite wet for Iberia. But for Northern Europe, the UK and Ireland is included in this. It's a dry month with quite a lot of easterly winds. And then that dry signal intensifies, if anything, as we go through into June, the high pressure is centred across more parts of southern Scandinavia, Central Europe and into the North Sea. Again, that's bringing in east southeasterly winds. So it's a very warm month, potentially quite a hot month in June, but also looking really dry. Heavy showers or thunderstorms down across southern Europe and uh, into the Mediterranean. Uh, that's July. So again, the high pressure still just weakens a little bit in July. Um, still generally on the driving average side, both in Northern Europe. So much of Scandinavia still driving average. And you would say, but particularly for Northern and Western parts of the UK and Ireland, it's rather driving average too. Notice many of the central southern parts of Europe are going a bit wetter than average. So obviously... Um, the risk of showers or storms pushing northwards into more central parts of Europe is uh, increasing as we go into July. But overall, the signals for us still there for a relatively warm and dry month. That's September, uh, sorry, August, I should say. By August, it looks like we are losing that driving average signal. So very gradually, we might just be starting to hint at things going a little bit more unsettled as we get through to the last stages of the summer, although it is quite a weak signal. And that's September, and again, very weak signals, both for August and for September. It does look as though sort of France, central parts of Europe are possibly still on the wet and average side, but Northern Europe is looking rather drier uh, than average. And then we go through to October, winds are swinging into the southwest, so it's a different pattern in October. High pressure's down here, so it's dry into Spain and Portugal. Uh, and then low pressure is up here kind of thing, and we're bringing in a westerly flow, southwesterly flow uh, in between. So all October possibly is rather more westerly and um, wet and windy type pattern. But it's six months away, so don't worry about it. Coming back to the more reliable uh, time frame. Um, so May seems to be anticyclonic, warm and dry. Overall, uh, June looks like a cracking start to the summer on this. It's only two months away as well, so quite exciting times for June. Could be a very warm, maybe a hot month and also dry as well. July and August are both looking pretty warm, but there is a gradual weakening of pressure. Not necessarily going to low pressure yet, um, through the middle and latter part of the summer, 
uh, and even in September, not going to low pressure yet, um, but certainly a weakening of pressure through the middle and latter stages of the summer, possibly hinting at something rather cooler and more unsettled turning up late in the summer after that very uh, warm or uh, even hot and dry start that we have in June. Well, I've rattled through very, very quickly this month, and uh, I've cut down a little bit on the banter as well. So, um, hope you found it interesting and informative. We shall be back with CFS 6 Not Talk Ed uh, for you next month, and of course, that's going to extend out into November. So, we'll go through the whole of summer and autumn in uh, next month's CFS 6 Not Talk Ed. Uh, don't forget to check out today's other video updates tomorrow. going to be a really, really busy day. We've got Solar Sunday coming up for you tomorrow. We have our ECMWF and Metro France long-range uh, look ahead. We're going to be giving away a prize with metcheck.co.uk weather instrumentation. Somebody is going to be winning our temperature and humidity forecast station. And we may have a little update for the... Um, uh, May Day, back holiday weekend as well. Easter Sunday tomorrow, of course. But uh, nevertheless, we're only a couple of weeks away uh, from the um, May Day, back holiday weekend. So uh, we may start the countdown for May Day, back holiday weekend. Uh, also, tomorrow, there could be a gas where we sunny around it, but I might be pushing it a bit to get that in. I'll see. All right, that's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.